Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuvir. In this class, we will discuss about the similarity measures in agglomerative clustering and what are the positives and negatives of the similarity measures. In our last class, we discussed about um, agglomerative clustering example. So please, this is a continuation class. Please watch our previous classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, the similarity measures, when we are discussing about agglomerative clustering example, we have to update the distance matrix. So based on the assumption, you already know what's distance matrix and how to calculate the agglomerative clustering distance matrix, how to update the distance matrix. When we discussed the example in our last class, we discussed that we use distance in different similarity measures. In our example, we chose the maximum method. So what we do here is, uh, let's take an example for refreshing the concept. Let's take these two clusters. In these two clusters, if you want to identify the similarity between these two clusters using maximum method means, uh, in these two clusters, this point and this point are very far away from that. The maximum distance is updated in our distance matrix. Uh, so that is one similarity method that we call it as complete linkage and minimum identifying the minimum distance and updating our distance matrix is one method minimum we call it as single linkage method. So in our last class we discussed different clusters will be formed based on this different similarity measures if you consider minimum will form different clusters if you consider maximum will form different clusters uh, now we will understand what's the positives and negatives with this minimum and maximum linkage uh, means complete linkage uh, minimum means a single linkage and group average and watts method uh, let's take an example and understand how this effect on our uh, agglomerative clustering uh, suppose if you consider the minimum updation means single linkage uh, similarity measure so what happens here is the pros or positives are uh, this works better, this works good when we are considering, when there is a clear separation between the clusters. Means, uh, see here, let's take an example. The, this is one cluster, this is one cluster. So, there is a clear separation between these two clusters. In this type of situations, this minimum method works fine. Here, here it is identifying clear separation between the clusters. So, it is identifying this as one cluster, this as another cluster. So not only spherical shapes, that's very important to understand. Uh, here, the example consists of spherical shapes, uh, but not only in spherical shapes. Let's take an example. This is one cluster and this is one cluster. Our minimum similarity method will clearly identify this is one cluster and this is one cluster because there is a clear separation between these two clusters. Uh, let's show it in the Python. The example, see here. This is one cluster and this is one cluster. When we apply k-means clustering, what's the problem with this k-means clustering? K-means clustering always uh, identify globular shapes, means spherical shapes. That's why these points are considered as one cluster and these yellow points are considered as a another cluster. But usually this is not as one cluster. This is one cluster, this is one cluster. That is identified by hierarchical clustering. This example data set taken from sklearn in the sklearn in classification, we clearly have different classifications, uh, not classification, this uh, clustering methods. Uh, we clearly have different examples on different data sets, how hierarchical clustering works, how k-means clustering works on these data sets. The example is taken from this uh, hierarchy uh, in the sklearn. See, let's take this example. The same example when you apply agglomerative clustering, we got a clear separation between this is one cluster and this is one cluster. That's the advantage of a hierarchical clustering. Let's take another example, the example which we showed in our uh, previous class, uh, previous board. So uh, this is one cluster and this is one cluster, but k-means clustering is identifying as a spherical shapes. That's why it considers this as one cluster and this blue points as another cluster. But this is not the case in hierarchical clustering when you apply agglomerative. It is clearly identifying the this one as one cluster and this one as another cluster because there is a clear separation between the clusters. If that is the case, it is advantage. Okay, ne now let's consider the next example. See here, there is a clear separation between the clusters. That's why it is this one is identified as one cluster. What happens if there is noise between the clusters? 
our minimum method won't work properly if there is noise between the clusters. Let's take the, an, another example. There is some noise between these clusters and this is one cluster and this is one cluster. What happens? How this will be executed if we are having noise between the clusters? See here, the output, output will be like this. It won't work properly on noisy data if, you, if there is noise between the clusters. See why it is not working, that we have to understand. Let's take an example. See here, if you take a point here, assume that in the process of agglomerative clustering, if in somewhere in the middle, assume that this is one cluster and this is one cluster and these are the noisy points in the middle. Assume, take, an, take a noisy point here. So, what's, what we are identifying here, we are always calculating the minimum value between the clusters, minimum value between the clusters. If you take this point and if you calculate the minimum value, it is very near to this cluster, that means it will go through this cluster. That is what we will keep on updating the minimum value. So, that's why this line of going to this cluster and this line going to this cluster, that's why it is not uh, helpful. If you are having noise, it is not working properly. Okay, try to understand. It's very important. If you have a clear idea on our, on our last class, how the distance matrix is updating, we will get a clarity on this, uh, why it is not working properly on the minimum distance. Mi on minimum, if you are having noise, why it is not working properly. Now, let's take an e another example, maximum method, or we call it as complete linkage. This is the example which we considered in our last class. Uh, we identified the maximum distance and updated the distance matrix. Uh, so, maximum distance works properly if you are having noise. So, why? Why it is working properly? Let us consider in the, in the process of agglomerative clustering, somewhere assume that this is one cluster and this is one cluster. If you consider any noisy point, how it will get updated? It will up, update the maximum distance. Means, if you take this point, calculate the distance between this point and this whole cluster maximum value means this maximum value will be considered the same way the distance from this cluster to this maximum value will be considered out of that which one will be selected the minimum will will be selected so this noisy data points moves towards to either one cluster either to this one or that one that's why it is working properly on noisy data points based on the distance it will move to this side or that side thus the case which we got here not the case which we the uh, this is not happen in maximum case that's why maximum case is working properly if you are having noisy data points now coming to the next uh, uh, negatives of this maximum distance is uh, if let's take an example like this in this situation maximum distance don't work properly because uh, maximum distance uh, if you calculate the maximum one means complete linkage it is tending towards globular shapes means spherical shapes uh, why because that we have to understand let's take a point here we are updating the maximum value maximum value means calculate the distance between this point and uh, this cluster the maximum will be updated the same way calculate the distance from here to this cluster assume that this is forming a one cluster so this tool maximum value which one is having maximum value this is having maximum value and with this out of this we will identify the minimum distance we will calculate the we will pick the minimum one so this point goes to this cluster these points goes to this cluster so it is always tending towards globular shapes that's very important to understand so maximum the negatives of maximum is it is tending towards globular shapes uh, like that same way the next example is a uh, group average group average means uh, so we will ca calculate the average of the distances between all the data points in our cluster let's take these two clusters how we calculate the group average means uh, Calculate the distance between all the points uh, between the two clusters this point to this point this point to this point this point to this point uh, Like that calculate all the distance from here to all the points here to all the points uh, And uh, average it uh, average it uh, what's the equation for group average? Let's check the equation for group average uh, so similarity between P i and P j P i is a point in cluster 1 P j is a point in cluster 2 
like that we have to pick all the points we have to calculate the distance between all the points and divided by number of data points in c1 and number of data points in c2 that is what det means number of data points in c1 multiplied by number of data points in c2 this is how we calculate the group averages group averages the okay the positives of this pros of this group average means group cluster group linkage we call it as it is good for noisy data points the same way the maximum is affecting the same way this is good for noisy data points if you are having noise between the clusters it is it works good and uh, the negatives are it is tending towards gobbler shapes the same way the same way how maximum is affecting the same way this is also tending towards uh, gobbler shape but there is, this is a trade off between minimum and maximum group average is a trade off between it is not more likely tending towards gobbler shapes like maximum it is not uh, working as minimum it is a trade off between uh, maximum and minimum so next one is uh, watts method watts method is exactly almost similar to group average but the equation there is a small change in the equation what's that equation is uh, similarity of pi pj we are squaring the value that is what we are doing here we are squaring the value divided by c1 and c2 means debt of c1 means the number of data points in the c1 number of data points in c2 this is also same like the positives of this is it is good when we are having noise between the clusters it is a negative negative points cons of this point uh, of this uh, method is uh, this is tending towards uh, tends towards uh, gobbler clusters so these are the different linkage methods means similarity measures which we consider in a agglomerative clustering and how they are getting affected hope you understand the concepts if you are if you having any questions regarding the concepts please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you